What's up guys, I'm George and in today's video I'm going to be answering all of your guys' questions about my two clownfish and also talking about how I smuggle them on a plane to get them home. So last year I had this exact same 10 gallon tank with me, but I only did corals. I didn't have fish because I thought, hey, it'll be a little bit easier maintenance wise, and then I also won't have to worry about the fish uh, and what to do with them over breaks. But the thing is, my friends would always come and check out my tank, and they would think the coral is super cool, but they would always ask, well, where are the fish? And I'm sure a lot of you guys can relate to this when your friends and family come to your tanks where you have all this, you know, coral that's so expensive but all they really want to see is Nemo. Where's Nemo? Where is he? Dead, dead, dead. So at the end of the year last year, I finally decided, okay, the next time I see a fish I really like, I'll end up getting it for this 10 gallon nano reef. And over the summer, I got a pair of clownfish, but I never really answered all of your guys' questions about them, and I never really explained to you guys how I got them. So I posted this photo of them on my Instagram, at Coralfish12G, and I asked you guys to basically ask me anything you want about these clownfish. So I'm just gonna be answering your questions. At Pop Chop's mom asked, do they have names? Yeah, they do. So it's kind of a funny story. I usually don't name my fish. So I live in a fraternity this year and all of the guys really wanted me to name them. And they said if I didn't name them, that they would. And I certainly didn't want that to happen. You can only imagine. Kroger, your Delta Tau Kai name is Pinto. Why Pinto? Why not? So I ended up naming them. The bigger one, which is the female, is Scarlett Johansson. And the smaller one, which is the male, is Sean White. One more hit, here's the setup. All eyes to this hit. Oh! And there it is! Oh! <laughs> 6.8, Sean White. And the reason for those names, if you haven't figured it out yet, are because Scarlett Johansson and Sean White are both really a pale white, and they're redheads, just like these clownfish are all white and they have orange heads. At Tom underscore Flip asked, what is their designer name? Okay, so for those of you that don't know what Tom's talking about, there are regular clownfish that just look like your average Nemo. And then there's a type of clownfish called designer clownfish, which are specifically bred to have really cool and different color patterns on them. Scarlett Johansson and Sean White are a type of designer clownfish called Miami Whites. At Preston Fonseca 24 asked, where did you get them from? They came from a clownfish farm down in Miami, Florida, run by a 65 year old man who only speaks Spanish. His name is Miguel Hurtado. Miguel, si estás viendo esto, gracias por los peces. So this man transformed his entire backyard into this incredible clownfish farm because clownfish are his passion. He loves raising them and he just tends to them and cares for them all day, every day. And it's really amazing. He doesn't care at all about the money. He only will sell to certain people. Uh, he won't sell online. And his cream of the crop clownfish breed that he's famous for creating is called Miami Whites. At DeChamp189 asked, what is their origin and or how do you make this breed? Miami Whites are so special and rare that you can only get from him in Miami. He makes you fill out a bunch of paperwork uh, when you buy them, it's kind of a big deal. And Miami Whites are the offspring of breeding a fancy white with a Wyoming white. All right, next is Scorpio Exotics, S underscore Lynch 14, and James Warren. They all wanted to know how much uh, these clownfish cost. So a pair of Miami Whites apparently sells for $600. Say what? I've heard a little bit less, but either way, this is a really expensive fish. And that's why a lot of people don't take the financial risk associated with buying them. At Chaz1252 asked, are these the ones you picked up from the breeder in Miami? Yes, they are. So I'll tell you guys the story now of how I got these and how I smuggled them on a plane and brought them home with me. So when I visited Miguel down in Miami uh, to do a video on his clownfish farm, at the end of the day, he actually ended up giving me a pair of two as a gift. I really don't care about how much they're worth. Um, it's more the 
crazy process I had to go through to get them home that makes me so attached to them. If you're trying to bring home coral or fish from an aquarium show or something like that, uh, this is probably your best bet for how to do it. So Miguel gave me the clownfish in a bag with the water uh, and a good amount of air in it. And I had to go out and get one of those like mini coolers. It's like those uh, really big water bottles. Basically the bags actually fit perfectly in that. And then when you sealed that cap on, if the bag leaks, it'll at least seal it. And then it's also like a thermo whatever. So it, it seals the temperature. Uh, of the water inside the bag so your clownfish don't get too hot. And then it was also great at kind of disguising as just a water bottle because you couldn't hear or really feel like the water moving in there. And I put that in my luggage the whole time I was really worried about them actually. Somehow it got through. If any of you guys know anything about, you know, TSA, they're really strict on uh, like fr fruits, foods that you bring, anything like live animals, pretty strict about it. So I was really surprised when it got through and I didn't really have any problems with it. Full body check. But wow, have I never been more nervous opening up my luggage when I got it back home? The whole process took like two, two and a half days. So yeah, that's how I got my clownfish all the way back from Miami to Chicago. They just hung out in this tank all summer and then come fall when I had to go back to school in Wisconsin I just brought them with me because I've said it before and I'll say it again Chicks dig clownfish, especially baby clownfish. All right next up we have at Javei asked I was told that the difference between Wyoming whites and these Miami whites is that the Miami whites will have a blue shimmer throughout. Can you confirm? Okay, so there's a type of clownfish very similar to Miami whites called Wyoming whites. They're so similar that most people just get Wyoming whites because they're a lot cheaper and call it a day. I'll put up a diagram so you can see a little bit better what makes a Miami white different than a Wyoming white or any other clownfish. And one feature that my clownfish have that I really think distinguishes them is that they do have that blue iridescence that you're talking about. Here's a close up. I don't know if you can see it, but I really feel that you can kind of see this very, very light blue shimmer in the white on its body. At Taylor.m904 asked, do they host any of your corals you keep with them? They actually don't, which is kind of weird because with all the clownfish pairs that I've had before, they've somehow managed to host like the weirdest of corals. These guys actually, like right now, they'll swim kind of near the elegance coral, but they'll never really go in it, which honestly, that's how I prefer it to be because when a clownfish hosts any kind of coral rather than an anemone like they should that's a bad thing it could end up killing the coral at jacob riley 1009 asked have you ever tried to get them to host an anemone yeah so i actually have never had an anemone in this tank but i really miss my rose bubble tip anemone that i had before i came to college and i really think i'm gonna get another one for this tank to see if it'll host these clownfish at ab underscore 156 asked would you recommend clownfish for a first saltwater fish Yes, definitely. Any type of clownfish, especially the Ocellaris kind, uh, is a great starter fish for beginners. They're really peaceful, they're very hardy. Overall, it's just a really good beginner's fish. At Haley.Cannon asks, how do you keep your clownfish healthy? Clownfish can do well in a 10 gallon tank, although it's much nicer and I would recommend to give them at least a 30 gallon tank because that way you can also have other fish too. You need to feed them once or twice a day with a marine pellet or frozen food, and you definitely need to change the water two or three times a month maybe, definitely at least like once a month to make sure that the water is healthy and clean for them. Sorry, this isn't more in depth, I'm just trying to get through all of the questions. At Nick Gribbick asked, how different are your Miami white clowns to regular clowns, care-wise? Care for Miami white clownfish is literally the same uh, is for any Ocellaris clownfish. So literally everything I mentioned in the last question applies for these guys as well. At official.judekearney asked, what is their approximate lifespan? Are they fresh or saltwater? Clownfish are saltwater fish and they can actually live for up to 10 years uh, in aquariums, although usually a little bit less. Uh, but there have been cases of people keeping clownfish in their aquariums for over 20 years, which is pretty crazy. At freckled underscore phenomenon asks, uh, are they a mated pair? Yes, these guys are a pair. 
uh, but mated usually refers to clownfish that are paired and also laying eggs. And these guys haven't laid eggs ever. And that's because for clownfish to lay eggs, the water has to be a pretty warm temperature, too warm to also have corals. So I would rather also be able to keep corals than have my clownfish lay eggs. At Luke.Chick asked, what should you do if part of their fin gets partially cut off? That's actually a really weird coincidence because I recently got a message on Instagram. Yeah, here it is. Okay, yeah, this is from someone else. And they sent me this picture of their clownfish whose tail is like completely cut gone. That's weird, to be honest. If this happens to your clownfish, number one, there's really nothing you can do about it except for watch your tank very closely to see uh, if any other fish are bullying that clownfish. But clownfish with a tail like this can still live. So I definitely wouldn't just give up on it. At strawberry underscore greens asked, can you pair two different types of clownfish? Yes, as long as they're from the same species, like Perculas or Ocellaris. At AB underscore 156 asked, can you keep different types together? You can definitely keep them together, but you don't want to have more than one pair of clownfish in the same tank, unless it's really big. At Lil Bear underscore Mew asked, what are these guys' tank mates? So right now, because I would never want to add anything to the tank that could possibly harm this clownfish, um, it's just them as far as fish. But I have all of this coral, as you can see, and I have some snails in there. I actually really couldn't even keep any more fish in a 10 gallon tank if I wanted. So yeah, you guys get the coral all to yourselves. And then a whole bunch of people here wanted me to answer uh, what I feed them, how I feed them, and if they're always willing to eat. And I'll actually show you guys how I feed them right now. I have so many different types of food for them. I mainly feed them pellet food, just dry food, because when you're trying to study for micro theory economics, you don't always have time to make them gourmet frozen food. So right now I'm using these Hikari Marine um, pellet food. Uh, these are pretty small little pellets because these clownfish are only, they're under a year. I think they're like probably eight or nine months old. They're babies. You know, a lot of people always see me feed them and they think like I'm starving them, but I'm not. It's just that saltwater fish, especially clownfish, love to be fed. They'll eat as much as they can whenever they can. So I'll show you guys how to do it. I feed my clownfish twice a day near the back of the tank. I like to hand feed them for two reasons. First, it minimizes the waste by ensuring all the food sinks and is easily eaten by the fish. And two, because over time, you can develop a relationship with your fish and they'll expect to be fed in the same spot whenever they see your fingers. In my situation, I always have to make sure the male gets enough because my female is naturally the more aggressive eater. And that's pretty much it. So thank you to all of you who asked really good questions on my Instagram account. I'm doing another video just like this, but it's gonna be for my tank update and it's gonna be a room tour of everything about how I do my aquariums here at school. If you want to ask questions about this system, go to my Instagram page at CoralFish12G, give me a follow and ask a question on my most recent photo for it to be featured and answered in my next video. And make sure to give this video a big thumbs up down below. Thanks so much for watching guys, really appreciate it and I hope I answered all of your questions on my clownfish. So remember to keep those nitrates low. George, out.